Lawrence sets and throws a deep shot. It's caught by ETN. ETN is going to take it all the way. Oh, at this point, we're saying, offense, are you going to do something? And they did do something. They've come up big when they needed to come up big the last couple of weeks. And this play is being talked about in the building like Trevor Lawrence with a big-time play before the snap and then after the snap. And how good is Travis Etienne? We'll talk about it. Speaking of how good is, how good is Josh Allen played for the Jaguars this year? couple more sacks. He's second in the NFL. Like I said, and we've been saying, he's not playing at a pro, pro Bowl level. He's playing at an all pro level. We're going to talk about the Jaguars, Damn. winners of five in a row right here, right now, at Sneakers on Jags Report, live! This is the Action Sports Jags, Jags Report Live, coming to you live from Sneakers, sponsored by Farrah & Farrah, the exclusive entry law firm of the Jaguars. This is the best I've ever been. This is the best team I've ever been on. This is one of the most funnest teams I've ever been on. And I uh, just want to continue to win. Me personally, I think that we can be so much better. You know, we got to continue to work. And they haven't hit their ceiling yet, especially on the offensive side. Calvin Ridley not alone. Evan Ingram, Josh Allen, a lot of these players haven't been in a situation like this, and they're relishing it right now. They come in with a chip on their shoulder, this entire team. I think even their head coach, nobody wanted him either. Jags got them, and now they're winning big. And we love the excitement. We love the excitement out here. We're, we're pumped up. But for the players... Don't listen to us. Put on your earmuffs. We're rat poison. We're going to tell you how good. We're making reservations for Vegas right now, uh, Brett Marks. Absolutely, yeah. Huh? Well, we're going to be there. Why not? Regardless. <laughs> hey, you can keep listening to George Pickens, though, if you want to. Yeah, that's that's going to work okay. That Are you going to yell the entire night? Huh? Are you going to yell the entire night? Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> that's the way we like it's you, been Dan a long, Hey, 1999 was 23 years ago. Right. I had dark hair back then, yeah, for goodness that's a good sake. Point. Come that's, on. That's a good, this team will gray you over the years, for sure. <laughs> Brent Martin, Dan Hicken, Jags Report Live at Sneakers in Jack's Beach. And here's the deal. You can throw all the numbers out. You can talk about 6-2, first place in the AFC South. That's where this team should have been. That's where they wanted to be. But he, they are good. This is yeah. a really good football team. They started proving that last year, Dan, and now they're amongst the elite. The record says so, and I think most people would say so. Like, in some ways, they had no business winning the last two games, like yeah. formula-wise, right? I mean, the Saints ran 87 plays. Yeah. Jags ran in the Turnovers. 50s, right? They had the ball the whole second half, but they found a way to win. Yesterday, they're down minus three in the turnover battle when it mattered, right? And then all of a sudden, but the Jags just... They're, they're good. They're really good, and they're beating teams with winning records. Of all the 6-2 and two teams, they have the best winning strength of schedule that they've played so far. It's time for the Game Plan, sponsored by EverBank. Advantage you. Make the most of your money at everbank.com slash Jaguars. Uh, the offense is doing enough, but... By their standard, they want to do a lot more. And that's what's fun about the rest of this season. Six and two, and the offense has yet to really take off to the point we think they can play and maybe get Zay Jones back. But the offensive line's playing better, healthier, and Trevor Lawrence is playing good football. So there's a lot to look forward to in the second half of the year. But right now, there's a lot to like about being six and two at the bye week. We just got to find ways to finish those drives. You know, I had a bad play down the red zone that that can't happen. That took off, you know, seven points, but at least three points off the board for us. You know, that shouldn't happen. I can't let that happen being a quarterback, and I got to be smarter there. But all in all, it's a great win. You're always going to take wins in this league, and it was cool to see us fight and battle through the adversity. Getting the lead, playing with the lead, and just doing everything that we can, um, you know, to make sure that we came out with a win. We didn't protect the ball as much as we would like to. Uh, that's an area that, you know, we, we kind of came up short and, you know, not as efficient in the red zone and whatnot. But, um, like I said, we just did a good job of doing enough. Obviously, it sucks to have some left out there, uh, but we won. We got the win. Uh, that's the NFL. It's going to be ugly sometimes. It's going to be tough. Uh, it's tough because of the standard that we hold ourselves to. And what a standard it is as the Jaguars get to 6-2. and two. Everybody's pumped up about it. They were excited in the locker room post game. Bye week, bye week, bye <laughs> week. But tonight, we want to welcome back a guy who's probably the happiest football player in the NFL yesterday, right? <laughs> Devon Hamilton, all smiles. You're back. Congratulations. It was a long road. Welcome back. I know it meant a lot to you to get out on the field. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah. 
What was it like to be back? Oh, it was awesome. Uh, definitely getting back out there with my team and uh, kind of getting back in the mix of things. It was a very exciting moment for me. Well, you know this guy by now. He's been around for a bit. He's a former Ohio State Buckeye, Devon Hamilton. He's been in the league. Oh, we got some Buckeyes. Settle fans. down. Yeah. Uh, 2020 <laughs> third round pick. And here's what's cool about Devon Hamilton. 45 games played. Look at some of the numbers. And he does the dirty work inside on that defensive front. But he stayed in Jacks on a three-year deal. He signed in the offseason. And the Jags plan to have him around for quite some time. Uh, you got 14 snaps in against the Steelers as you're making your way back is that kind of part of the plan just kind of ease back you might have been even ahead of schedule I think there was some talk you wouldn't come back until after the bye yeah um I mean I haven't been I haven't played since the middle of the preseason so it's kind of just kind of easing me back in there kind of getting back in the rhythm of things and kind of getting back to where I was what was it like just going through all, all that you went through? I mean, how, how tough was I mean, it kind of came out of the blue, and I know you had to deal with a lot of stuff, but what was that like for you? It was very tough. I'm not one to be injured or yeah. be hurt very much, very often in my whole entire football career, so it was definitely a, a new path for me. Yeah. Um, definitely an area where I can learn at. Yeah. And this was a different kind of injury, and not to get into specifics, but it sounds like you'll get into some specifics as we get a little further down the road and share your story a little bit more, but guys hate being hurt. Yeah. I mean, it's the worst part of this thing, right? Because you want to be out there. Yeah. I mean, best thing you can do is be available, you know? All right. <laughs> You're not that, then it's hard to be in the NFL. And I want to go back to camp a little bit because yeah. everybody was talking about Devon Hamilton, the way you were playing before you did have to miss some time. Mm. I mean, you must have felt good about your performance heading into the season. Yeah, I definitely put in a lot of work during the off season to hopefully do well during training camp and throughout the season so far but uh obviously things happen and that's just football how it is but yeah Devon we thought the work. story of this team the identity of this team was going to be the offense this is going to be some high-powered offense and the defense is going to be good enough and so for the beginning of the year we were you know we were a little surprised first game second game hey defense playing okay defense finally after eight games man we got to say I mean we're watching three and out three and out three and out this defense is really good third or fourth in the league and stopping the run yeah. getting you back getting smoothie smooth back I mean good things are happening lay ahead I think for you guys why did you guys have that sense that this defense could be this good uh, I think we kind of just picked up where we were last year I felt like we finished the year pretty strong last yeah. year and we were definitely competing very well and um this year we just kind of knew we had to take the next step and this is the next step. Yeah. <laughs> what have you seen, whether you're watching on TV, watching on the sideline, watching in practice? I mean, it seems like they're in sync. You guys are now in sync as a defense. No. What do you see from, like, an expert point of view? I think we're just playing with a lot of energy. I mean, starting off the game strong, finishing the game strong, and really just going out there and trying to put our best film out there throughout the whole week and even throughout all these games that we played so far. You've been teammates with Josh Allen for a while. Huh. He's a good football player. He's yes. playing great football this year. Talk yeah. about what you've seen from him, and is there anything different in his game, or is he just, yeah. I don't know, what, what do you think? I think he's just really focused right now. Yeah. I mean, he's obviously coming up on a contract year for him, sure. and he really wants to show out and really put on for the team, and obviously we have a very good chance of really – evolving as a team right from where we were the last couple of years so um yeah i just think he's just really trying to play his role and trying to elevate as much as possible not to talk about your business too much but we just showcase you got paid in the off season pretty handsomely but he's going to be buying dinner when he gets paid <laughs> just to let you know i mean we're talking about hundred million dollar kind of contract yeah. on the plate for josh allen i mean that's big time stuff i mean you talk about focusing in locking in oh yeah i guess that does get you a little bit motivated <laughs> it definitely does you know i really want him to stay around and be around jacksonville obviously i've known him since i've been in jacksonville and he's just been a mentor to me and helped me evolve my game even so I'm just so excited for him and what he's doing so far and what he's going to do for the rest of the season for us well there's another guy that's been around for quite a bit and he stepped into the starting role on Sunday against Pittsburgh and now everybody's talking about number 42 <laughs> power play of the week sponsored by IBEW local 177 powering Jacksonville since 1912 1912 well, here he is. He played a terrific game. Andrew Wingard in for Andre Cisco, and this is the pick. Yeah, but you know what? Forget the pick. What I saw was like, like a guy coming up and finishing tackles with some speed and stuff. That I, I mean, Devon, that was a little surprising watching him play that way. He was attacking yesterday. Oh yeah. I mean, I feel like that's just always been Dewey. You know, yeah. he's always been out there trying to 
<laughs> hit somebody, you know, go after somebody, you know, play with energy, and that's just him. Yeah. Well, you get guys on this roster like Devon Hamilton, even keel, yeah. and then you get guys like Dewey Wingard. <laughs> Check out this right after the game on Sunday. I don't want to hear no one complaining. I don't hear no one complaining in the comments about the Jags. This were six and two. Let's go. So it's a dog. Hey, here. hey, absolute dog right here. Man. We don't listen to nobody. Nobody. We us. Nobody. Hey, let's go. All that, all that by hope defense. <laughs> we was hoping they would have came in here and put up a better fight. Hey, uh, how about filling in in the depth that you guys continue to show when guys are around? Glory to God. First off, God is great. He's working in Jacksonville. I'm just a dog. I'm just a, I'm a dog. I'm a dog. Uh, tell us what happened on the pick. Big one in that spot. Just saw, saw number one go under, knew they were trying to attack the middle of the field. Broke, made the play. How good does this position feel right now, knowing there's still more out there in the second half? Isn't this fun? Is this not fun? <laughs> I've this been here fun. 15 years, man. This is fun. This is freaking awesome, man. These fans, I mean, look at these fans. We need to be selling out the bank every damn week. We need to win all our home games, and we're going to go to the Super Bowl. Hey, one more thing here real quick. Pickens was talking a little bit this week. Yeah. He had the one play, but you guys did a good job on him. I'm still salty about that. He hurdled me. That's on me. That's on me. But, you know, if this is hope, hope is a dub. So, And, you know, I'm a big believer in not talking. When you talk, you put expectation on yourself. So I need all the Jags fans to flame him. No, that's a dub. <laughs> He's one of a kind, man. Uh, there's a lot in there. And then he uh, on Instagram today, wow. these grown men crying about their tiny towels is bringing me so much joy. <laughs> I mean, listen, he is who he is. That's about as genuine as it gets. And uh, so. that was kind of fun, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, he had, you know, he plays with an edge. He needs that, right? I mean, he's not the most athletic guy, but, I mean, he's terrific out there. And he's get one thing about him, and this is what I like about this Jaguar team. You, Smoot, Dewey, guys who get better each year. That doesn't always happen in the NFL, but you guys are working at your craft and getting better as football players. Absolutely. I think uh, just keep on pushing each other. I feel like yeah. during practice and definitely during the offseason, we kind of stay really close and, uh, yeah, just really pushing each other yeah. out there. How much do the bad times fuel guys like you, guys like him, guys like this locker room? I mean, I feel like so many of you have chip on your shoulder, not just in Jacksonville, Evan Ingram, right? Sure. Didn't go so well in New York. A chip on his shoulder. He's playing excellent. But a lot of you guys went through some not so great times. Two number one overall picks in a row, mm -hmm. Urban Meyer that year. I mean, how much has that fueled a lot of this locker room, maybe the past here or other places to kind of come collectively and do what you're doing right now? Yeah. I feel like for most of, the, most of the guys who end up staying throughout those times, it, we just know that we never want to feel that ever again. I mean, we, we knew we were a lot better team than that, and we knew we could put out so much better film and better play than that. And, you know, we felt like we were, set, were letting Jacksonville down as a city by our play. Well, you ain't letting them down anymore. They love you. They uh, love you. By the way, we're going to need the bleep machine for you. Should we warn anybody here today? You're, you're good? Uh, I'm you're good. good. <laughs> <laughs> kind of figured. Hey, when we come back, a guy that went through some stuff his rookie year and is now running through the NFL, Travis Etienne, with another big-time game and establishing himself as one of the playmakers in the National Football League. More with Devon Hamilton yeah. when we come back. It's Jags Report Live, live at Sneakers on CBS 47. This is the Action Sports Jags, Jags Report Live, coming to you live from Sneakers, sponsored by Farrah & Farrah, the exclusive entry law firm of the Jaguars. Good start, but we got to be able to get better as the season goes on uh, if we want to get to the goal that we want to get to. Now, Coach always talked about it in training camp and stuff. It's just about going 1-0 every week, and it's going to be even harder going, going past the bottom. I think that guy's going to coach a position someday in the NFL when he's done. And by the way, yeah. if he coached a linebacker position, uh, there's few that are playing it better right now in the National Football League than Foye Lewican. He is just unbelievable. I, I say this all the time, and I, I'm shocked as we welcome you back to Sneakers. How in the world did the Atlanta Falcons let that kid go? He's yeah. young, he's a sledgehammer, and he makes every tackle. Devon, I mean, oh, what sad. a guy to have behind you. 
Uh, hey. He's probably stepped on you a few times. Huh? I'm very grateful he's on our team. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Brent Martin, Dan Hicken, Devon Hamilton, Jaguars defensive tackle, Jags report live here at Sneakers. I actually want to talk a little bit more about Foyer before we get into our drive of the day because mm-hmm. we just had Dewey on. And yeah. then Foyer totally, he will not get too high. He won't get too high after a play. So you guys have a nice balance in your room of, hey, we got to show some swag, right? Yeah. we got personality, but also the job isn't done. Mm-hmm. What is that like? I mean, it's very nice, especially him being our leader on our defense and uh, being the head of our defense. It's very nice having him out there. He's the one making the calls and whatnot, and they're very even, very calm tone, and we can talk and communicate very well with him. I think people assume, too, every play in the National Football League is run at 110 miles an hour. Right. Most people don't operate that way. But the story on Foye Luikin is he does. He really does. <laughs> during practice, during walkthrough, any time. That's really... That's him. Yeah, it's fun to, <laughs> it's fun to listen to the other guys yeah. talk about Foye Aluakin. There's a lot of respect for what he's doing. Well, the Jags did have an important drive in this football game. The drive of the day, driven by your local Ford dealers. All right, well, this drive can be summed up with this play because <laughs> it was perfect. And they've run, they've run this formation a lot. But they haven't gone to ETN. It's so supposed s- to be a quick play down yeah. to Ridley, or they got another option on a quick play, get the ball out of your hands. They but sort of been setting pe- you know, teams up, and they hit it yesterday, and it was great. And, you know, it's, that's a tough play for a running back, right, Devon? I mean, to catch it and do all that, I mean, it was, it was impressive by the young man. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Trevor uh, saw that before the snap and then made the throw, and I think he had even had Doug Peterson smiling bigger today yeah. when they went back and looked at that play. Meanwhile, Travis ETN's playing just Ooh. great football, and I guess he's got some motivation, too. Listen to this. I just kind of went to that place where uh, I feel like the students could have drafted me. They didn't. So I just wanted to uh, come out here first time in the stadium, just showing what they was missing out on, and uh, just kind of go out there and make plays to win the game. Just doing whatever you can do to motivate yourself to go out there and be at the top of your game. Is that a chip, or did you think, did you talk to them like you thought they might draft you? I feel like everybody should have drafted me. <laughs> being honest. So I guess it wasn't, being a, honest. it wasn't a specific thing to Pittsburgh. Devon, he had 27 touches yesterday. Yeah. He, uh, if you want 27 times 17, you're going up into the 400s, 450s. Uh, man, you play a tough position. Yeah. That's train wreck for a running back getting hit by you guys, play after play after play. Oh, yeah. Talk a little bit about that, maybe what he's going through. Uh, he's just a very tough dude. I mean... He's been through a lot and uh, been able to be out there and actually improve every year that he's been able to play. And like I said, we're very happy to have him on our team. Yeah, Everyone sure. talks about, like, he's not big enough to go in between the tackles. He is slippery. He's explosive. Tough, what tough. makes him t- – you've got to tackle guys like this for yeah. a living. What makes him so difficult to get even in between the tackles? I think he's really just a gritty dude. You know, it's, it's hard to tackle somebody who really doesn't want to be tackled and willing to apply that force towards you, especially as a defensive tackle, getting right. blocks and whatnot. But – yeah, he's just a really gritty dude. By the way, you're picked in the third round. Do you, like, have all 31 other teams a chip on your shoulder? <laughs> you know, I'm not even focused about that. I'm, I'm here. <laughs> uh, you're defensive coordinator. There was a stretch last year where it was like, okay, what about Mike Caldwell? And then you guys hit a different level in the second half of last season. And now this year, year two. He seems like he's making every right call. You guys are being coached well. You're not penalized a lot. Right. How good has he been? It's been great, especially in the second year of having him here. We've been really, really able to adjust with him and um, kind of understand his thinking a little bit more than we did last year. And um, I think it's been really good for us. It's been a blessing. And maybe he understands you guys, too, and yep. what Devon Hamilton does best and what this corner does best. And, I mean, Trey Herndon's had a terrific season, right? Yeah, Should have caught that one and ran it in, but I'm sure he was bummed but yesterday. Yeah. But he's played great football for you guys in, in, in his spot. So, yeah. yeah. Is this a fun defense to play in, though, because he will bring the blitz. He'll show some exotic stuff. Like, I would always think as a player, now you're doing dirty work no matter what. But, (laughs) I mean, do do you sense that the guys like to play in it? Absolutely. We're playing an attacking defense, which is everybody's being able to be free, be able to attack the line scrimmage, attack the ball carriers and whatnot. And, um, yeah, this allows us to play free. How uh, good are you guys, in your opinion? I think we're excellent. I think we're the best team in the league, to be honest with you. But yeah. That being said, we still got to put it out there and every single week and show ourselves. You think about who was missing from the defensive side of the ball. I just watched Darius Williams walk off the field, and 
There's people telling me that Darius Williams is playing as well as any corner in the National Football League. I mean, that's how good he's been performing. So, it, you know, you don't have Cisco out there. You don't have Tyson Campbell out there. You're a little concerned, but they didn't miss a beat. So there's depth there, too, Devon. Yeah. Yeah, you got to step up when you when the time comes, <laughs> yeah. man. That's the NFL. Yeah. I was going to ask you, how do you feel like the guys played in your absence? Oh, they play ab absolutely great, man. I mean, I couldn't ask for anything better from them. They've been playing, really balling out out there. Well, you take a look right now. It's not just Devon saying it, us saying it. The Jags are showing it. The record says that yeah. the Jags are one of the best teams in the AFC, and uh, they're 6-2. <laughs> and two. By the way, the Dolphins and the Chiefs play each other next week. In Frankfurt. So one of those teams are going to be 6-3. and three. Yeah. And Cincinnati's coming, right? I oh, mean, yeah. Cincinnati certainly is playing better football. Oh, yeah. Uh, but you beat the Steelers. You have a chance to beat the Bengals. You play the Browns. You play the Ravens. Jags have a chance to really It'll position themselves nicely uh, for the postseason. More with Devon Hamilton coming up. He's a new dad as of late. We'll ask him about being a dad and more football when we come back. Remember, we go an hour Aww. now. <laughs> a little football in his hands. We're live at Jags Report Live here at Sneakers in Jack's Beach until 8 o'clock tonight on CBS 47. This is the Action Sports Jags, Jags Report Live. Coming to you live from Sneakers. Sponsored by Farrah & Farrah, the exclusive injury law firm of the Jaguars. Hey, sunshine and rainbows and plenty to go around here. But how about a happy birthday to Antonio Johnson? He oh, played that was one nice. defensive snap. Pick. And he got a pick on his birthday. <laughs> That's pretty cool. They're trying to blend him into the action as well. Young man out of Texas A&M. And I give a... Hats off to Tyler Shatley. Yeah. Walker Little was ready to play. Right. But they could hold him on another week. Uh-huh. Because Tyler Shatley's playing good football, and that offensive line's playing better football, Dan. I thought so, too. You know, listen, they protected Trevor great against the Saints. Pittsburgh's awesome, you know, on They're the tough. edges. And, and they had their hands full, but they did a good job, and Trevor had time to throw. And don't take advantage oh. of a kicker that <laughs> makes 50-yard field goals yeah. look like they're from 20 yards out. Man, <laughs> This dude's kick. got a big leg, man. He had four field goals, and if the Jags hang on to the football and don't go in the end zone, he could have had six or seven. Yeah, no doubt about it. He I was mean, terrific. He's a good player. That's a good up grade this offseason we're back at sneakers here in Jack yeah. Beach Devon Hamilton on the show here on this Monday night he's actually making his debut here on Jags Report Live made his 2023 debut yesterday of course for the Jacksonville Jaguars and hopefully has a big second half of the season Brent Martin Dan Hicken as well good to have you on CBS 47 well your new dad man uh, we've got video and I mean it really looks like you're holding a football here in, in camp <laughs> yeah how's the little dude Ace doing he's definitely not that small anymore <laughs> <laughs> he, get, he takes after his dad uh oh pretty big boy uh oh <laughs> well, what's it like being a dad and then though you were out a little bit you probably got a chance to spend more time around him yeah it was great um, that was actually one of the probably the best things about being out is being able to spend time with him and uh, really get to know him where really, he really get to know me and uh, kind of build that bond with him well he's got a bunch of uncles oh yeah <laughs> i say he's a fan favorite around the stadium <laughs> uh, so we tell this story dad we're just yes. telling devon uh our producer at action news jack shannon mm -hmm. she had a baby boy okay on the same day devon and his wife had a baby boy same, same hospital, doctor same doctor both named their baby boy Ace. No kidding. <laughs> That's How crazy. How wild is that? <laughs> That's unique. He didn't know. He didn't know. They've never, yeah. never met. But uh, it's happened on the same day. Um, how about Halloween? You doing anything for Halloween? Uh, we'll probably go trick or treat and take him on trick or treat and get him dressed up and whatnot. <laughs> All right. but. Well, how about these uh, kids' edition, Dan? Of uh, this is Mike McDaniel. That's a That's good one. Perfect. That's perfect. That's oh, <laughs> okay. It's some ideas for Ace. Hey. Yeah, pretty clever there. Taylor and Travis, beautiful. <laughs> I, I mean, we got to have a bunch of Trevors around here, probably, right? Yeah. yeah. That's that's nice. I like that. <laughs> I like that. Uh, the internet will win. Meanwhile, the players are dressing up too. Oh, yeah? Oh, yesterday they did. Yeah, they did. Walking, in, walking into the stadiums, yeah. What's this? This is the Jets. Yeah. I think uh, walking down. And then look at Joe Burrow. Hey. Burrow wears some stuff now when he's coming into a stadium. Well, you go 28 for 32 and throw three touchdowns and beat San Francisco out there, you can wear whatever you want. How about you, Devon? You styling it all or what? Uh, no, nah, I'm not one to dress up, to be honest. <laughs> with I want to ask Devon a question about <laughs> the Ohio State, if all I may. Right. Yeah, do it. Okay, so this year, you know, Again, undefeated. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it always comes down to Michigan, which it will. But I, I happen to have a Heisman Trophy vote. 
And there's a guy who plays at The Ohio State who I've been watching who I think might be the best college football player in America. I know he's going to be a top three or four pick yeah, in the yeah. draft. Oh, yeah. Talking about Marvin Harrison Jr., how good is that kid? He's amazing. I mean, I don't get to personally watch him too much. Right. We're usually traveling sure. on Saturdays, meetings and whatnot. But every time I get to tune in, man, he's making a play. He's respo- like they played Wisconsin, right? And yeah. They got a new quarterback, and he, he's breaking in. He's okay. He doesn't seem great, but throw it to Harrison. Two touchdowns, 120 yards, receiving six catches. They were only up on Wisconsin 17 to 10 late, and they finally you know, put him away. They say it might be better than his daddy. Uh, he's That's a, the Hall of Famer. <laughs> would be saying yeah. something. Uh, he's uh, bigger. Real quick, speaking of Ohio State, uh, lost the last couple to Michigan, but mm. Michigan's a mess right now. I mean, are you, are you enjoying this from a distance? Did hey. they steal your signs too? Hey, they might have. They must uh, have. <laughs> <laughs> might have. Yeah, but you never lost to them. I never lost them, not once. That's Same. something you'll take forever. Oh, yeah. Especially when my brother playing there right now, I got a little something ahead of him right now. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Wait, that's a timeout. Yeah. Your brother plays at Michigan? No, he plays at Ohio State. Oh, at Ohio State. Oh, okay, okay. okay. I was, I was, yeah, now no. you definitely have it. Oh, that'd be a yeah. Little, <laughs> that'd be crazy in the household. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that. You did tell us this. You told Dan, I think if you didn't end up at Ohio State, you might have ended up at Kentucky. Yeah. Could have put you with Josh Allen. I know. In I, Kentucky. It's ah. crazy we talk about that a, a lot, actually. Ooh, they would have been. Even no, I'm, I'm glad I went to Ohio State, though. Yeah. <laughs> so am I, having been yeah. a Gator. I was going to say, they may have ended your Florida streak a little earlier, yeah. if that was the case. <laughs> uh, we're going to say goodbye to Devon Hamilton, uh, making his debut here on Jags Report Live. We'll have him back later in the season as well. He'll sign some autographs, take some pictures with the folks here at Sneakers in Jack's Beach. But the Niners are next. Two weeks to prepare. Both teams get the bye week. If you want the game flex, don't plan on it. We'll talk about it more. Oh. But the Niners and the Jags are next on the horizon. We're live at Sneakers. Sure. In Jack's Beach, live on CBS 47. We'll be right back. This is the Action Sports Jags, Jags Report Live, coming to you live from Sneakers, sponsored by Farah and Farah, the exclusive entry law firm of the Jaguars. Bye week, you're right. Bye week. Seriously, seriously, guys, listen. Hey, congratulations. Congratulations. What you guys have done now, this first half of the season. I'm going to tell you something. I don't know if many teams have been through this type of gauntlet that we've been through. From the travel, overseas. Hey, Doug, they haven't been. I don't know if this will ever be done in the history of the NFL again. Five wins in the month of October in five different stadiums? Yeah. I mean, that's unbelievable. And a year ago, 0-5 in (laughs) October. So that's even more so unbelievable in terms of the turnaround. Well, Devon Hamilton here, and he is signing some autographs, taking some pictures. We'll catch up with Devon in just a couple moments one more time before we say goodbye to him. Welcome back to uh, Jags Report Live. Brent Martineau, Dan Hicken. A little story from the plane last night, all right? Coming back. And uh, Doug Peterson doesn't usually do this, but they win the game 6-2. and Everybody's happy. And uh, almost landing. And Doug gets on the speaker. Oh. And he starts to uh, give the schedule for the guys Monday and Tuesday, and then says, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, off, and the plane just oh, goes crazy, right? There was a shift in the altitude there <laughs> when that happened. Uh, Jags would get Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday off, yeah. but sometimes they stay through Wednesday, right. giving them an extra day, well earned. Well deserved. Well yeah. deserved. Yes, I want him to get away. I want him to rest. I want him to heal. But at the same time, I want him to think about the next, the next game, right? The next nine games, you know, um, and, and how do we continue kind of what we started? Your right, keys the to the game, sponsored by Greenway Kia. Well, here uh, is a look at the keys. Oh, I like that. <laughs> yeah, this is good. Rest, recover, <laughs> get yeah, ready. Yeah, this is your daily routine. That's keys. <laughs> That's right. I like those keys. <laughs> get ready for nine more hours. By the way, we can do that. <laughs> we can rest. We can recover. We're good at that. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we will do that. All right, here's the question everybody keeps asking. Yes, sir. And listen, the answer is no, okay? But will the Jaguars get flexed to Sunday night football? Why not? And they will let us know by tomorrow. Yeah. They have to. It's a 12-day yeah. window. Why can't we get flexed? I just don't see it happening. First of all, we don't want that. We want it on CBS 47 and Fox 30, which the game oh. will be at 1 o'clock. You're being selfish. I, I am being The fans want selfish. under the lights. They do. The fans want it. 
<laughs> but I also don't think the players or the football team or Doug Peterson wants it okay. because the advantage is having San Francisco play at 1 o'clock, which is 10 a.m. West Coast time. We can play San Francisco anywhere. <laughs> yes, it doesn't matter what time, where. We're ready. Bring on the Niners. All right. I know you all want it. I'm just telling you, it's probably not going to happen. You don't think it's going to happen. It's the Raiders and the Jets. Yeah. The Jets are four and three. The, the Raiders, even if they lose tonight, oh. they're big fan bases, big markets. Yeah. And if the Jags were to move to primetime, they would play three primetime games in a 35-day stretch. And guess what? Pittsburgh might think the NFL wants the Jags to win. They might get angry. But I don't think the NFL <laughs> wants the Jags on primetime three times in a month. I just don't believe All it. All right. All right. I don't like your attitude, though. I was kind of hoping they let's, could flex. Let's bring in Devon Hamilton. I have a, can, I, can I ask Devon a question? Well, you sure can. You host the show. Yeah. Devon, I have a question for you. Yeah. My 18-year-old son <laughs> told me that he spotted you this summer, this offseason, playing pickleball with Adam Gotsis. Can you confirm that? Yes, we play pickleball during the offseason. <laughs> wow. A little conditioning into- there. You got condi- it's I was good conditioning. Say, yeah. Are you in love with it? I love play pickleball during the off season. Can't really do it too much during the season, though. Right, I get it. We I heard Andre it. Cisco was asking about. Do a bunch of you guys play? Oh uh, yeah, not all together though. We kind of break out throughout Jacksonville, but yeah. And he thought is who the best pickleball player would be on the Jaguars? Uh, it'd be kind of hard to yeah. to say. If we all played together, I'm sure it'd, it'd be pretty clear. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, if you could just go, if it's not a physical game, unfortunately for you, I mean, or that would help and play in your favor. Uh, we're just Although talk- Devon may break the ball when he hits it with such force, it may just explode. I don't we, know. We were just talking about uh, games under the lights. You guys had some important ones last year. Mm. Uh, you won one Thursday night football last week. How much do the players enjoy under the lights, the national spotlight? Family all around the country, friends, former teammates being able to watch. It definitely elevates our game a little bit more, you know, being the only, usually the only team out there that's playing during this time and um, being able to showcase what we do best. And, um, yeah, we just kind of go out there and show out. Well, and, and the better you get, the more games that you're going to play. And in the second half of the season, we got, we got a Monday nighter, we got a Sunday nighter. Thursday night would be a little difficult. I'm sure the players aren't big fans of the Thursday night game, though, right? Uh, we get a little break afterwards, so that's ah, what we look forward yeah. to. <laughs> hey, the schedule is fine as long as you win. Everything yeah. on the other side of it's uh, really good. Devon Hamilton, I uh, appreciate you hanging out with the fans and signing some autographs and taking pictures. Yeah. No problem. Thanks for hanging with us. Um, when we come back here on Jags Report Live, we're head to the bar to oh. eat and talk, not drink. Yet, sneakers in Jack's Beach. Do it. Report live on hey, CBS. What's Sports that show. lady doing by Devon? <laughs> <laughs> This is the Action Sports Jags, Jags Report Live, coming to you live from Sneakers, sponsored by Farrah & Farrah, the exclusive entry law firm of the Jaguars. Well, we had a low point early on, and uh, we all looked at each other in the mirror, looked at ourselves in the mirror. Uh, we got to work. We had to get back to our football, and I'm glad that we've done that. And I'm going to the bye week feeling good, but we got a lot left, a lot to go earn. The further you get away from London, the more you realize that was a big stretch for the Jaguars to come together and a little wake-up call for this football team that was 1-2, and two, now 6-2. and two. And uh, here we go, Dan, your favorite part of the show. You know, Everyone in Jacksonville you. gets to watch Dan eat. There's a lot of pressure for that young lady. I mean, she has to walk across the way. <laughs> she holds it brilliantly, yeah, beautifully. Well done. Yeah. And if she trips, what a moment we would have on TV, though. <laughs> huh? And she just went, woof, <laughs> things fly everywhere. We all get hit with the sauce. Fries and, and, and ribs today. Hi, ribs. This is good. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you want me to eat a rib on TV? Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. I got a feeling you're going to do it. How about a fry? Uh, welcome first. back to Jags Report Live. Brent Martin, no, Dan Hicken. And we do what's on the menu along with fries and ribs. Speaking of Evan Ingram, 51 catches. Last year he had 73 to set a franchise record wow. for catches. How many is he going to have, Dan? So he's 22 behind that. Yeah. And that was a record. With he's on pace to have over 100 over receptions. 100. And he, he and Trevor have obviously really built a rapport. And I think there's some, like, I know what you're going to do stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I love the first and tens when they'll throw it to Evan and he'll get six, seven, eight yards and that gets him ahead of the chains and gives him a whole 
bunch of opportunities on second down. I love that. Stuff. He's come up with some big third down catches. He hasn't as well. scored a touchdown though. Has hasn't he? scored a touchdown. And I will say this: he's eight and a half per catch, which is his lowest of his career. Yeah. But they seem like important yards. I think so. I yeah. think that's yeah. Like I said, I think like on first down and they get the ball to him, and he had a nice play yesterday where he caught one uh, crossing and kept going and ran. I thought he was going to score on that yeah. one for a second. Yeah, he saw some open grass and he thought, but there was a lot of guys around him to bring him down. Jags are 6-2 and two on the season. Yeah. They've got nine to go. Okay. How many wins are the Jaguars going to have this season? Well, I think 15. this... Uh, <laughs> they may not lose again. be realistic. No, I, I, listen, they got a tough schedule second half, but I will say this. There's four six and two teams. They're in play for the number one seed Absolutely. again. So you got to kind of let that run through your mind a little bit because the great teams, the Chiefs and the Patriots used to do this. They get the one seed. They skip the first week of playoffs. They play one of the worst teams in the playoffs. And then all of a sudden they're one win away from the Super Bowl. It's a great formula. And if the Jags could get to that level, I mean, Kansas City has a lot of tough games left too. So... It's anybody's game going forward here. The bottom line is the Jags are in the hunt. And because they're in the hunt, I'm going to ask you, make a move today, yeah. tomorrow. Uh, Big Cat Williams got traded from the Giants to Seattle. Should the Jags make a move? Yeah, I'm okay with them making a move. I'm just telling uh, Last week I would have said yes and signed up for this. Uh -huh. Listen to Doug Peterson today when I was over there at the stadium. Right. I don't think they're going to make a move. At all. Uh, yeah, I just don't think mm. unless it really just shows up in front of their face. But I don't think moves happen like that in the NFL. Right. I think you've got to go get it. You've got to take risks. And I just don't think they're going to do that to upset what they've got going on. I think Devon Hamilton being over there, being active, helps them. Smoot sure coming does. back. But Campbell coming back. Cisco coming back. And they worry about the chemistry, but... You know, and I've said this before, I was talking to our friend Daniel Murphy, and he said well, it does something for a team when you add more good players, right, yeah. at the trade deadline. It makes everybody take, like, oh, we mean business here, you know? And so I don't think it's necessarily a negative thing if you go and find a guy who could help you. And again, maybe it's not an edge rusher, although that's what everybody wants. Maybe it's something else. Well, listen, I don't think it's going to get flexed, the game against the Niners, and I don't think they're going to make a move by 4 o'clock tomorrow. You're maybe no I'll fun. go 0 for 2. You're no fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go to the fun thing about winning. Oh. You get to yap a lot yes. on social media, and Jags fans are doing a little bit of that, but also asking some fun questions. Let's bring in Action Sports Jack Stuart Weber. He has more on what's happening after this latest win. With that big win against the Steelers, the Jacksonville Jaguars 6-2. and two. As you probably know by now, this is the first time that has happened since 1999. Social media having some fun with that. It all started with our guy Bold City Cap last night asking how old everybody was back in 1999. Jaguars followed up with a tweet, what were you doing in 1999? Let's go through some of the best responses, shall we? How about Joey? Going to my UNF classes, wearing my Baselli jersey, and watching or attending games where we beat every team except one. We're not going to talk about that team they lost to. How about Edub? Our guy Escobar, junior year in high school, working at Publix. We had a TV in the stock room with the games on that year. Super Sport, playing football for the Stanton Blue Devils. We got partying like it's 1999 on the board as well. How about Big Fish Bob? Fifth grade, I got a Jimmy Smith jersey for Christmas, and I would always wear it. I will say the overwhelming response from most of the people on Twitter, they did not exist. Kind of shows you how young this fan base is that's getting to enjoy the Jacksonville Jaguars winning games and doing it at a clip they haven't done since 1999. For Action Sports Jacks, I'm Stuart Weber. Let's go back to you. Well, when we come back, we talk about the defense a little bit more and also name some MVPs of the first half of this season on both sides of the ball. Where were we in 1999? I had graduated college. And Dan right Hicken was just working on his legacy here in Jacksonville. Ah, An eating legacy. I was uh, 37 in 1999. Wow. How yeah, about man. That? Enjoying the ride. But you still look good. Oh. You're actually cleaned up pretty well right now. I thought this would be all over your nose. Delectable. We'll be right back. Off the bone. 
This is the Action Sports Jags, Jags Report Live. Coming to you live from Sneakers. Sponsored by Farrah & Farrah, the exclusive injury law firm of the Jaguars. That's the way this team is built. Uh, you know, we got guys everywhere that, you know, in moments like that when you need it the most, uh, we take advantage of one-on-one -on -one matchups and they can go make big plays at any time. And, you know, Travis, Evan, Calvin, everybody did a great job today at just, you know, making the play when their number was called. Two things about this Jaguar football team. One, they truly all do seem to care for and like each other, which I think is an important part. And two, I think what Doug Peters has done with a relatively young football team in building, and I don't want to use the word culture because it's a throwaway word, but there's a sense of camaraderie that he has built that I think has been terrific, Brent, going forward. That would allowed them to go to London and win, come back from London jet lagged and win, go to New Orleans in four days and win, and win in Pittsburgh. That's partly a Doug Peterson thing. Well, not just doing that inside the building, starting to do it outside the building where it doesn't matter if they play on the moon, you feel like they're going to win a yeah. football game right now. Brent Morton, Dan Hicken, Jags Report Live, live on CBS 47. I got a feeling Christian and Trevor are going to play a little golf during the bye week. Yeah. Doug Peterson as well. And uh, hey, that defense continues to play well. Let's see who led yesterday's defense in tackles. Hmm. Your tackle tracker, sponsored by IHRS, tackling hair loss. Well, 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 what a surprise. <laughs> it's Foye Aluakon who had 11 more. He's up to 92. So, I mean, you want to talk about Evan Ingram and 51 catches. How about 92 tackles in eight games, double digits? This guy is a tackling machine. We've talked about him already with Devon, but can't say enough good things about the way he's played football. And now, because he did it on the national stage against New Orleans, I think guys will start I to agree. take a little more notice. This is a guy who every year is up amongst the league leaders in tackles. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Hey, let's uh, name some MVPs for the first half of okay. the year, all right? We're basically halfway through this uh, season for the Jags. We start on offense. There's a lot of places to go. We're going to take Trevor off the list, okay. even though I think Trevor's playing really good football outside of a few plays here or there. You can see the development. Even though the touchdowns are only at nine, yeah. he's playing good I think he's played terrific and he's uh, you know what he is he's a winner and he's going to find ways to win he won at Clemson he won in high school and now he's winning in the NFL but my offensive MVP is ETN I thought you know I think he has proven himself after last year and where he stands this year is one of the top five running backs in the NFL I think that's how well he's played. I agree with you. And uh, Evan Ingram is my offensive MVP because I think he is that actual security blanket. Yeah. People use that as a cliche term yeah. for a quarterback. He is that six yards, eight yards. When you need more yards after catch, the toughness of this football team on offense, a lot of it bleeds through a guy like Evan Ingram. How about on the defensive side of the ball? I think you're going to hear a familiar name yeah. or two. I'll go with Josh Allen because he needed to be an impact player, a splash flash player yeah. for this front line defense and he's doing just that. well they would not be getting sacks if it were not for Josh Allen and he has nine of the team 16 or more than half so I would agree with you but just to be different I love what Foyer Luacon brings and it's the intangibles too, the leadership uh, you heard Devon say I mean they all look to him and I think he is the heart and soul of their defense yeah, it's, a, it's an easy team to root for yeah. right now and a lot of different choices that secondary has played lights out for this defense as well. When we come back, Jags report live. Well, we'll see how Aspen did. The Jags are doing well. How's Aspen doing? Maybe run a winning streak? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll find out. We're live at Sneakers in Jacks Beach every Monday. Devon Hamilton's headed out of here for the bye week. Have a good bye, Devon Hamilton. And thanks for joining us tonight on CBS 47. This is the Action Sports Jags, Jags Report Live. Coming to you live from Sneakers. Sponsored by Farrah & Farrah, the exclusive injury law firm of the Jaguars. Hey, Trevor Lawrence tonight out at the Avenues Mall at Palm Beach Autographs, signing some autographs for the fans. All and, right. uh it's a good time here in Jacksonville. Get to meet and greet. I think Josh Allen's going to be out there next week, I believe, uh, at the Avenues Mall. Brent Martin along with Dan Hicken. Good to have Devon Hamilton here with us yes. on a Monday. Seekers in Jack's Beach live on CBS 47. Yeah, and just exciting times. And look, got to gear up, rest up, and get ready for a big, big second half of the season. A lot of football left to be played. So got to feel great about the Jaguars and where they are right now. Jags are on a streak. We'll find out right now if Aspen's on a streak. Oh. 
It's time for Ask Aspen, sponsored by Subaru of Jacksonville on Atlantic, the right choice for your next vehicle. All right, Aspen, you ready to come up with your picks? <laughs> Aspen, you made quite the mess, but are you happy with your picks? Are you ready to do it? Yeah? All right, let's lock it in. Make your pick. <laughs> yeah. All right. Three That's, in a row for that doggy. Yeah, three in a row for Aspen. Almost couldn't miss there. ETN almost got into that 100-yard rushing category. Had a big day, of course. Jack Social coming up 7.30 on Friday. We'll have Jaguars All Access coming up Wednesday this week, by the way, uh, due to the bye. So, hey, it's a lot of fun. We'll be talking Jags. The shows don't stop, even though it's a bye week. No, keep it rolling. We'll have a great time. We'll see you all at the bank a week from Sunday night or 1 o'clock. And again, we'll find that out for <laughs> sure tomorrow. Have a good night, everybody. Tune into the World Series on Fox 30. Oh. Game three right now, if you wish. And thanks for watching on CBS 47. Thanks for watching the Action Sports Jags, Jags Report Live. Coming to you live from Sneakers. Sponsored by Farrah & Farrah, the exclusive entry law firm of the Jaguars.